Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Welcome to a new day. Hope you're doing great. Um, I woke up early again this morning, but I am so enjoying this day. You know, every day I get up, I don't know about you, but I just am so grateful for another day. <laughs> I just think that um, as I've gotten older, I just start to really prioritize things differently. The first thought in the day now is, wow, <laughs> I'm here. This is great. I love it. Uh, but anyway, I hope that I hope you're feeling positive too. I know how hard it can be sometimes. This is a very challenging time of our lives but you know every day is a new opportunity to to just um, make it the best you know make it the best day in the world whatever you've got planned it may not be a big thing you know you may just be going out to the shops or getting groceries or uh, playing with your grandchildren or you know or just sitting home and reading you might be dealing with an illness you might be feeling a bit under the weather you, oh, you know whatever it is I know it's hard but just know you're not alone you know, we've got 500,000 women in our community here and lots of them are on our YouTube channel and here on um, and our Facebook and Twitter, all over the place. But um, never feel like you're by yourself. And as I've reminded you in previous uh, emails or messages, if you need a hug, just say, I need a hug. That's all you have to put in the comment section. You don't have to say what it is, what the problem is, what the issue, just say, I need a hug. And I bet you that people will come to help. It's just how we are. I think older women in general are super, super loving and kind. But anyway, I've got my cup of tea this morning. I've got, um, uh, what is this today? Oh, it's green. It's just a matcha green tea. And uh, it's lovely. So I'm going to have a sip of it. Mm. It's really good. I love green tea. But it's actually uh, very good for you too. In fact, I've never met a tea that wasn't healthy for you. <laughs> in some way or the other. I know in the States you're a little bit bigger in uh, on coffee, coffee. And I certainly love coffee too. But I'm a tea girl. Anyway, glad that you're here, everybody. I wanted to share with you. Um, I actually have a, a, a story today that I, I think is going to make you smile. But um, I wanted to mention as I was looking through my, my deck of cards this morning, and I do this regularly. I don't know whether you've uh, seen these, but um, there are inspirational cards. And we got these, uh, put these together so that we could help give you some concrete ways to deal with uh, issues in your life. So, for example, we've got um, this one is simplify your life. And on the back, it just has a quick, a quick paragraph on how to bring that about or some suggestions. It's not a how to, it's a how to, but not a you must. Uh, what's this one? Oh, you love your wrinkles. <laughs> That's a good one too. Um, they're, they're just things that you know, we say to ourselves all the time. This is a good one, actually. Share your losses. And um, I actually recently, I, I went through a, a period a couple of days ago where I was sorting out boxes. I've just been kind of like you trying to downsize a bit. And I went through all these boxes and um, actually it was very emotional because I've kept not everything, but I've kept a lot from my children's uh, childhood. And I did go through a major cleanup like five years ago. But, um, you know, I've still got their Mother's Day cards and I did a really cool little kind of story of their life when they were young, like first year, second year, what you were doing. And oh, my goodness, I read them and I was so um, aware of this, of losses, you know, things that happened uh, that were very difficult. But just just sharing that with you right now has helped. But um, anyway, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, inspirational deck. I hope that you check out, check it out. And um, this little chat that I'm going to have today links back to one card that I'm going to show you later. It's really, it may seem unrelated, but it's it's connected. So this is a, a an article by Lisa Dunkel. Lisa is a really wonderful writer. She lives in uh, Mexico, Yucatan, and is actually moving to the States soon. And this is a big move for her. But she wrote a series of articles for us and turned it into an ebook, actually, on how to live the millionaire's lifestyle on a retirement budget. And you can look at all her articles on, on the website because they're very, very fun and um, lighthearted and uh, interesting. But this one's about how living alone can make you feel rich. Now, this may seem like a contradiction to the, those of you who are sitting at home without too much money and feeling, you know, pretty lonely and, um, you know, maybe wishing for the grass is greener, that you could have more money or more friends or more boyfriends or, you know, friends in, in your life in general. And she says, you know, that's okay. It's okay to, to feel those kinds of moments of, um, you know, being lonely or sad or alone, not so much lonely, but uh, just if you stop to think about it and you change your mindset about this, living alone is actually a really cool gift. And it's actually a, a way, if you shift your mindset, of feeling completely abundant and wealthy and, and luxurious. 
And she and she says, you know, you, you can talk about the different things that she's in her own life experience, but here's here's her take on it. So she says, here's why she thinks being living alone is uh, a luxury and, and, and makes you feel rich. First of all, she says, I command. <laughs> Everything is my way. And, you know, it, it's, it sounds a little bit selfish when you start saying these kinds of things. But, you know, a wealthy person has freedom to do stuff. They can travel. They can buy things. They have freedom to do something. And they may be, may be free from as well. But what you can do in, um, when you're older is look at it differently. You are free to do anything you want. If you live by yourself, you're, you're not, you may have financial restraints, but you, you know, if you're living like me, you work around that and you find out the things you can and cannot do. But, you know, you get what you, you don't get necessarily what you want, but you can take what you need. And, you, you know, you've got freedom, no negotiations on anything. You don't have to ask for permission. It's like, I want to eat gummy bears and popcorn for dinner. No one's judging. No one's there to to sort of you know deviate, take you from your likes and dislikes. You can have the furniture organized in your house the way you want to. You can spend your money, a little or large, <laughs> on anything that you want. You can take risks. You can do whatever. You don't have to think when you're buying some new clothes. Will your husband or partner or whatever friend like it? She said. Lisa said it was turning point for her when she heard some women say in a shop, I can't really buy that. My husband wouldn't like it. But if you don't have that person at home and you're living by yourself, you are free to wear anything. You can wear a nightdress, you can wear baggy pajamas, you can just wear nothing. <laughs> and you can, uh, you know, connect with yourself and connect with your with who you are. Um, the other thing she says is time is on her schedule. She's not going to be late for her own dinner. She's not going to be expecting someone to come home at a certain time and have a set of you know, d desires and requirements and conversation, um, you know, needs. No one, it's just you and you can do anything you want. Create your life the way you want. And she says that's luxurious. So, for example, if you're if you're living alone and you wake up in the middle of the night and you want to just have a... Oh, I don't know, cheese and crackers, this is my thing, or a cookie, or you want to just sit in bed and read at three o'clock, or you want to get up and have a shower, whatever you want to do. It's okay. You don't have to worry about making noise or making, <laughs> getting in anyone's way. And, you know, I'm not saying, by the way, all you women who have partners and who are married, and hopefully you got to the point with uh, your partner or your husband that if you wanted to get up at three o'clock in the morning, you have, you could do that. You know, there's relationship that that sort of agreements that you come up with as you get a little a deeper into a long term relationship. But, you know, she says, for now, if you're by yourself, just grab a cookie, go back to bed, have a, read a book, listen to an audio tape, whatever your heart desires. And she says, speaking of eating, eating a la carte, when I want, what I want, how I want. And it's the I. Now, Again, it can be considered selfish, but you could invite friends to come over. You could have, you know, that's that's your freedom. That is your luxurious um, choice. And it doesn't have to be a huge dinner party. I mean, sometimes I, I have a friend who comes over earlier and she, and we just sit and we literally have a piece of salmon, some rice and veggies, and maybe have yogurt or something after. I mean, that's it. And we sit here and have the best conversations and it's just you know, I live alone, but when she comes over, she's part of my alone. <laughs> uh, I'm everything's acceptable. And we can sit there in our pajamas or not, or just, you know, whatever. It's all part of a close friendship. And when you're living alone, you don't even have to ask for that. You just do what you like, eat when you like. Basically, what Lisa, I think, is saying here is that you're free. You know, you're free to do whatever you want, when you want, how you want. You can rediscover your personal likes and, and desires and passions in your own world. And a lot of women don't want to give up um, their independence that they've gained over many, many years and may have lots of male friends, but no one that comes home with you at night. And I think that's uh, maybe how a lot of women are finding peace with the fact that, uh, you know, if they've divorced or they're not by not with a with a partner, that they can create a world that's their world. And if there's a, a person, a man in it that, you know, enjoys your company and your conversation, you meet for coffee or drinks or, you know, go for walks or whatever, that that's okay too. But it's on it's on your terms. No one to yell at, at her. <laughs> she says, she says, look, I'm the star of my show. 
I am the director. I am the heroine. I am the producer. I am the whole show of Margaret. The whole show of who you are is, is up to you. And you can shape it any way you want. You can choose who's in your audience. You can choose who is uh, in the wings, you know, waiting outside the, the door. You can, it's your decision. Actually, I remember my friend Ray, when I was going through my divorce, he, he, he reminded me of this. And I'm telling you, it stayed with me for a long time. It was, it was like, you know, Margaret, you can be your, you know, the director, producer, star um, of your own Broadway show. You know, what's it going to look like? What's your costume? What's your attitude? Where's your stage? Really, really powerful uh, reminder. But anyway, I'd like to ask you, for those of you who are living alone, how do you, how do you find living by yourself? Are you okay with it? I mean, are you, if you're with uh, a partner, how, how do you manage to find your own identity, your own time? Do you think that living alone actually is a luxury? It makes you feel rich in the broad sense? I love this this channel. Actually, it's really fun, and I've, I actually advise you or recommend that you look at other Lisa's um, articles because this whole conversation about living like a millionaire on a retirement budget, she comes up with some great ideas. Maybe you can think of some too. So thanks again for being here, everyone. I hope you have a great day. Go out and do something fun for yourself. And my card for the day, this is this is definitely the card that resonated with me, and that was. Enhance, oh, it was embrace. Embrace your sensual self. Embrace your sensual self. Be at peace with who you are as a woman. And it says on the back, sensuality can be exp experienced in many ways. You can express your sensuality through movement, words, and passion. Enjoy the little pleasures that enhance your senses. Smell, taste, touch, and listen, listen consciously. And when you're alone, you can do that. Enhance your sensual side. Take really good care, everybody. Hope you have a great day. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye for now.